going on guys? Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And today's video is a little bit about my house and a lot about my house plants. Yeah. So if you're watching today's video, you may be a plant lover already. And if you are, you're gonna feel all the feels that I'm feeling. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I love bringing plants into my home and why I just loved the process of becoming a little bit more of a plant person. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. I'm not gonna to get too deep in this video um, because there are definitely a lot of feelings attached to my plants. Today's video is more like a show and tell. I do wanna say right off the hop that I am not uh, a plant expert. I am very green. But over the last, I would say six to eight months, I've acquired about 15 house plants, which are all behind me. This is not where they live permanently. Um, but I've acquired about 15 plants and I've managed to keep them very healthy. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the beginner things that I learned along the way, just a little tiny bit. And I'm gonna talk about each plant very quickly because I don't want this to be a long video. What I wanna do is make this video quick and I love plants, I'm really passionate about them. So if you guys have any specific topics you want me to talk about in relation to my plants or anything you wanna discuss, I will make a second video. But today's video is like an opening video. I wanna show my plants. I'd like to remake this video in like six months or a year's time and see how they've grown and see if I've acquired anything new or learned anything new. Um, but for today's video, we're gonna keep it pretty uh, quick. The first thing I wanna bring up before I take you on a little tour of my house and show you where these plants actually live is that bringing plants into my house has definitely made my home feel a lot warmer um, I don't know if it's like a placebo effect or not, but I just feel a sense of peace in my home. The air quality in my house has definitely improved. Um, and I just really enjoy the whole process of taking care of the plants and I enjoy their beauty a lot. So my living room before was kind of blah. I find with the plants, I just want to be there. I just want to sit there and enjoy the look of the plants and just feel like um, I'm more so in nature. I'm really lucky that I live in an area of the world where I get to experience nature outside of my house. If you live in an apartment in a city where you don't have nature surrounding you, I highly, highly encourage you to bring plants into your home. Um, I just, there's not enough time in this video to talk about all of the benefits just the health benefits, the mental health benefits, um, and just the amount of, again, I hate saying the word joy because I find it sounds corny, but I just feel like a peaceful joy um, taking care of my plants. And I know that some of you could benefit from that as well. Sorry. Most of the time when you see a house tour on YouTube, and yes, I said house and not house, that is a one dead giveaway that you're talking to someone from Nova Scotia. Um, but when I do my little house plant tour, you're gonna see that I live in just an ordinary, very small house. And I love my house a lot. Um, so I just feel like I'm representing <laughs> those of us who live in like normal houses. And all I mean by that is most of the houses that you see or houses that you see on YouTube are like really big, lavish, beautiful homes. Don't get me wrong, but it's just, you know, it's just not the reality for a lot of us. And so uh, I wanna show you guys my cute little house. Um, and some of my plants. So without further ado, I'm gonna to get to the video. Now, I'm gonna show clips of what it looked like before and uh, a little bit of what it looked like after my kitchen reno, but this is not a reno video. So I'm not gonna get into details about it unless you guys have questions. And if you do have questions, leave them in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get to the plants. I'm going to start in my kitchen because the plants that I have in here are smaller plants. They're probably a little bit less impressive than what I have in my living room. And this area is like a work in progress. You can see it's still pretty um, empty in here and I would like to add some hanging baskets. But anyway, here's where it kind of all started. My son gave me this African violet for Mother's Day last year and it was tiny. It was in like a teeny tiny little planter like as big as a teacup. My other plant that I have on my windowsill is an aloe vera plant. 
That's something I always had growing up and I just love having that in my home. I have some pothos up here. And again, it's kind of dark in here, guys, but this is actually one that I'm growing for my stepmom because I had another one up here and she really loved the shape of it. So I moved that one into my room. That's gonna go back up here, but I just have this one in this pot. I just recently repotted it. Next is my sad windowsill. Um, I have some rosemary here and some basil and mint all in the same pot um, that I actually use quite a bit for cooking. It had a lot more basil and mint in it originally in a second pot that was right here, but it dried out and I lost most of it. Um, so this is kind of what I have left. And these are tomatoes from our garden, which are delicious, by the way. And here's just a couple of plants that I have propagating here that's off of the same pothos plant. And these all came from a giant plant. I guess I would consider this area part of my kitchen. This is our kitchen table that my husband built, by the way. I love it so much. Um, here's my Monstera. This was my first plant that I bought with the intentions of becoming a plant person. Um, these were made popular on Instagram over the last few years, but this is just a stunning plant. And one of the things that I love about it is that it is very exciting to watch grow. And all I mean by that is when I bought it, it just had, it was probably you know, like about this tall, this would be the size, or maybe even this one was like the size of the biggest leaf that was on it, which is now this leaf up here. No, this one up here. And anyway, it just had a few fenestrations, um, and then there was a couple of other, these two would have been like really small leaves. And then very quickly, it started to grow new leaves, and when they grow, they come up like a shoot. It almost looks like um, a blade of grass that's curled up. I'm trying to see if I can find one that's about to come. Um, but anyway, it all comes all curled up and it grows up out of the plant like a stem and then it unravels. So it's just like a really interesting thing to watch. Um, it's really beautiful. This plant is now getting too big to put on my kitchen table. So I'm going to move this somewhere else in my house and find something new that I can enjoy watching it grow. Um, and I'm gonna leave that in this area here. This little plant I have in here, this is where I keep my dishes, oh, um, and mail and junk. Um, this plant here is called Alocasia. If I'm wrong, please let me know, or I'm actually just gonna put the name on the bottom of the screen. But this is a plant that I bought without doing any type of research. If you guys have any good care tips, um, for these types of plants, please let me know in the comment section below. Moving into my living room, this is kind of where I want to create a jungle-like space. I mean, I know the plants that I have now are quite large, but I want more. Um, and some of you might think that I'm crazy, but I really want to keep this end of the house the focused plant section. And so I do envision eventually having some hanging plants um, on the ceiling, kind of filling in the gaps here and here. And these shelves that I have here, I'd like to put some plants on them as well. My two largest plants, this one, which is a corn plant. Um, actually, there's two different types of dracaenas or corn plants in there. This one and this one, I feel very lucky <laughs> to have these two giant plants. Uh, the main thing with these two that I learned is that they really like a lot of indirect sunlight and I only water them when they completely dry out. So that's the biggest mistake I used to make before I knew anything at all about plants. And again, I don't know a whole lot about plants, but what I know is that these plants need to dry out between waterings. Um, the potting medium that they're in is has um, it creates an environment where there's drainage there's holes in the bottom of the pots there's trays under the pots so these ones really cannot sit in water if you know the specific type of dracaena that this plant is and that this one is or that this one is um please let me know in the comment section below. And this is where all of my pothos came from. I also have this beautiful peace lily. The flowers 
were white. Um, they're green now, and that apparently means something. I'm going to have to look that up again. But anyway, this plant is one of my only plants that likes to be moist. Um, this plant came from Walmart. My mom gave me this as a birthday gift. And it's so, it needs to be dusted, I think, but like it's so healthy and the leaves are so shiny. People think it's a fake plant, but it is absolutely real. Um, I really love this plant. This one is toxic to pets. Um, and my dog is nine years old and he doesn't go anywhere near any of my plants. Like I'm not worried about him at all. But if you had a cat or a dog who would like, for example, bite on some of these flowers, um, then they could get really sick. The last plant I have in this room is this little cactus. This was just like a grocery store purchase. I think Jeff bought this. I think that is going to be that plant's new home. What do you think? Eventually it'll have to go on the floor or on like a little table, but I think that looks great right there. Here's a quick shot of my son's room. Um, and he has a plant. So this is Wilson's plant. It's a Dracaena. He just picked this. He loves it. It has grown so much since we got it. I would say it at least doubled in size in less than a year. Some of the tips of the leaves are a little bit brown, but apparently that's kind of hard to avoid. I may switch to watering my plants with like rain water or bottled water or distilled water. If you have any tips, let me know. Um, our tap water probably has chemicals and minerals in it that the plants don't necessarily love. But I don't mind a little bit of browning on the edges as long as the overall plant is healthy. And this, like I said, has been repotted once. And this is Will's Dracaena. Here's our bedroom. Plant-wise, it's a little bit lackluster. Again, I would like to have more. I can't wait to make one of these videos uh, in the probably in the spring just to see how much I've done and what I've accumulated. But um, that is the fishbone cactus up there. I just think it's so unusual looking and so cool. And then this plant here on my windowsill, this is, I don't know the real name for it, but I was told it's called the Wandering Dude. And this is like a purpley plant. It's hard to tell in this lighting, but this plant grows like crazy and it loves being in direct sunlight. The last plant in our Bedroom is another Dracaena. Why do I have so many Dracaenas? I think just because they're easy to find around here and they tend to do well without like direct sunlight. Um, oh, that's macrame that my cousin made. I'm gonna see if she can make me some planters. But anyway, that's the Dracaena in my room. So I have three plants total in my room and I would like to have more. The big project that I would like to work on is this area. The painting of the ocean that you see is an old painting that was actually in the basement of this house when we bought the house, and I love it. It just has to be cleaned, and it either has to be reframed, or I have to fix the canvas around the edges or something. I just need to clean it up a little bit, and then it may go above my kitchen table or in the living room somewhere. But what I'd like to do with this kind of blank wall is make a living wall, either in the form of like, a garden on shelves or a moss wall and I'm not a hundred percent sure how I'm gonna execute that but that is like something that I'm so excited about and Jeff is on board so I'm probably gonna get him to build something uh, and we'll look up exactly what to do but if you guys have any ideas or have seen anything or if you have something in your own home please let me know in the comment section below those are the plants I have like I said I have about 15 plants and um, my long-term plant plan is that I'm gonna see how they do over the winter. This is my first winter with plants and I just wanna see how they do in my home environment over the winter um, because I am a little bit stressed out about it. My house is gonna be a lot colder and dry and I have a propane fireplace. So I just want to try to take care of what I have um, and see how they do before I start bringing in more plants. And then in the spring, um, I'm gonna get some more plants. If you have any questions about any of the plants, I didn't even try to pronounce some of the names of them because I can barely say the word house. 
Um, and a lot of them have like scientific names. So I just put the name down on the screen so that you could read it. Um, if you have any questions or any tips about any of my particular plants, please let me know. I would say the number, like the top three things that I learned about plants um, since becoming like a self-proclaimed plant person was just to pay, pay attention to um, three major things. So basically I would look the plant up like Google search or I have like a little plant app but I would look the plant up and I would find out what kind of lighting situation the plant likes. I would put it in that lighting situation and I would keep it there for like a few weeks just to see how it did. And I would try to mimic that lighting situation as much as possible. Now I'm limited to the amount of light I have because of the way my house is facing. Um, I have a north facing window and south facing windows and I don't have much on the sides. Um, so I need plants that need like indirect light and then my plants that need direct light I put them on my windowsills are really close to my windows. So just even that little bit of knowledge um, helps a little bit. The other thing is that I learned about their watering schedule. So I don't water my plants once a week. I water my plants as needed. So kind of like I wash my hair as needed. I water my plants as needed. I take my hand and I kind of dig through the soil a little bit and I will see how dry the soil is and based on just a little bit of Googling I did and how the soil feels, that's how I will water my plants. The other thing that I learned about plants is how to water them. And all I mean by that is all of my pots, whether you can tell or not, uh, I assure you that all of my pots have drainage. So they're either a pot that's designed with drainage on the inside, so there's like a, a second level in the pot and there's a grate on top so that water can um, drain out and not, not be like, have the roots sitting in moist water all the time. Um, or they are a pot with holes in the bottom on a tray. And when I water my plants, I completely soak and saturate the plant enough so that about 10% of that water is draining out away from the roots and then I let my plant dry out, not completely, but almost completely, and then I water it again. So those are the top three things I would say, um, like light, uh, watering schedule, and how I water my plants. I would say that is really all you have to know um, to take care of your plants. I do fertilize my plants, but um, I kind of do it willy-nilly. So I would say about once a month, I fertilize my plants. Some people say to do it certain times of the season and all of that, but I don't do that. I fertilize them once a month. Now my two large, large plants that I have were given to me as a gift, as I mentioned, and the woman who very generously gave me these plants when she was moving, she fertilized her plants once a month. And she had like these two plants that she gave me, they were like the small plants of the plants that she had. She had these big, beautiful floor to ceiling ferns and like an eight foot tall bird of paradise um, in her home and they were just thriving. So anything she told me, I wrote that down um, and I try to incorporate that. But other than that, that's kind of all I know. And uh, so that those are the beginner tips I'm gonna give you. And just let me know if you have any other tips um, in the comment section below. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope you really liked it. I really hope you guys are interested in this because I would like to make more videos about it. But if you're not, don't worry, I'm still gonna make hair videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Um, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of my content. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.